Hey everyone, welcome to another conversation, this time with a guest yet again. I'm really excited as always. This guest, you know what, we've been trying to sort this for quite some time. So it is the lovely Kate Greenhouse from A Year of Dates. If you like to shop on Not On The High Street, you may have bought something from, you may know about them. It's an amazing product based brand actually, which is different for me. But yeah, I get to do some work with Kate. She's an amazing client of mine. And it was just no brainer to get her on to have this chat because there's something quite magical. I'm all about the magic about their story and how the Year of Date story became their brand. And I really want to talk about that. So I won't give too much away, but I'll bring Kate straight on and let's let Kate tell the story herself. So hopefully the tech is with us today. Here we go. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was about to say good morning, but um, I am a little bit. <laughs> How are you, Kate? Yes, good, thank you. Yeah, very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just giving you a lovely introduction there, and I nearly sort of told the full story, but I was like, that is yours to tell. So <laughs> we will kind of go into that. But yeah, you've just moved moved house, haven't you? It's all exciting for you at the minute. We should have a little catch up first, actually. <laughs> Yeah, this is a very small window of the chaos that is around. My laptop is balancing on boxes and yeah, there is, um, I've not obviously not recorded a podcast in this house, so the light's not the best, but hey, we're, we're here. <laughs> we're in, that's the important thing. Yeah, and you know, this is it, and I'm forever saying this, like my, I always do behind the scenes, and, and I know you've just shared yours as well, Kate, about your setup. And I do the same because I don't have a designated area at the minute. So I literally, mine's the same. It's sort of stacked up. And I think there's something nice about that, though, isn't there? It's very real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we haven't got a coffee table or anything yet. So I literally was just looking around. And the Wi-Fi is only, the Wi-Fi box is in there. And it only works to a certain limit. So I have to sit here. So, yeah, it's just, you know, it'll... <laughs> It's all it's all sent to test us, isn't it? These <laughs> these yeah. situations. But it does. And you know what, yeah, at least you're here. You 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 are here live, so it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's let's, the important thing. Exactly. Well, let's talk about this. I'm sure we'll go into all sorts about. Yeah, you know, I always say that it's not. I, I used to this quite edited. It's not edited now. We just go for a nice conversation, nice chit chat. And if it goes off in those directions, the, you know what, the more random, the better, Kate. But let's start with your story. Well, we're good at that, aren't we? So that's fine. Yeah, we are. This could go anywhere. I probably should warn people. We like <laughs> we to could be here at five o'clock or something. I have to go and do the school run at some point. <laughs> I know. This could be like the longest episode ever. <laughs> we'll start with the story of, because I was just introducing you there as, you know, it's something a bit different for me that I'm all about, most of the time, about personal brands. But actually, this is very much a product-based brand, which, but the thing is, it came from a personal story. And that's what I love. Your story is just, yeah, it, I won't say too much, but I'll let you start with that of how your your story and your yeah personal life as such your yeah the origin how that became your brand take it away Kate wherever you want to start with it oh, yeah so it, it's a good job my husband's not here really because he likes to tell this story but uh, <laughs> we'll have it in my words instead um so about six years ago well myself and John my husband we've been married for nine years now almost um and about six to seven years ago for Christmas he made me a date jar um, it was a little glass jar with a bit of ribbon tied around it. And inside it was around 72, I think, envelopes, um, each one sealed and each one had a date idea inside it. So at this point, we'd been married for about two years, maybe, um, maybe 18 months. Um, we were both working, both commuting a lot, no children, just the two of us. So all this time on our hands, but we spent our evenings either working, playing on computers or scrolling on Facebook or whatever at the time. And we just weren't kind of, we weren't in a rut, but we were comfortable and we just weren't really doing the dating thing or spending quality time together. Everything was around work and um, just kind of, it, it just took over really. So he made me this date jar and then for Chris, so each Monday I would open a, an envelope and in it would be a little idea of something we could plan together, do together and just make that bit of time where we said, right, turn the computers off, turn the TV off and that and that was our time and it was just a really lovely um really lovely idea and thing to do um the favorite john's favorite part of the story is that nine months later our daughter was born so um 
it's not really the sales sales side of things that I like to go into it might put quite a lot of people off but realistically nine months later um our daughter came along um so again we weren't spending that time together we obviously had other things to focus on and which is which is fine because that's it's an important time um but in those nine months we got through quite a lot of the dates we went to bingo we went for picnics in the middle of January um we had one of them said Kate makes John a candle at dinner one of them said Kate makes John breakfast in bed I believe the other ones are still in there somewhere but that's yet to be seen um so yeah the the reciprocal cards so we just it it was just things we wouldn't do it was um go out for tea and cake and we did that after work we went to the northern quarter in Manchester and found a little tea house and found new places we'd be emailing each other during the day saying oh have you seen this would work for the theatre date we could go here we could try this and it just got us talking and doing the new things that we wouldn't have thought of of doing um at the time blogging was quite big um and I'd already been saying I want to write a blog but I didn't know what about so it kind of made sense to write a blog about this um so the very first envelope we opened was buy each other a 10 pound gift um and it was a week after Christmas, John had just presented this amazing jar to me. Um, we still can't remember what I bought him as the £10 gift, um, but he bought me the domain name a yearofdates.co.uk and essentially that's where it all started. Um, and say 18 months later, when I was due to go back to work, I didn't want to do the commute, the hours, the nursery run and all that kind of things. Um and I needed something new, um, a new idea. And a friend just said, oh, after we'd been talking about what we're doing at the weekend, and I'd mentioned the jar and something random we were doing, she said, well, I wish I had the time or the ideas to come up with that. And literally had a light bulb moment because I did have the time and the ideas already. And ah. it kind of started there, really. So, yeah, it's five years down the line. It's just crazy. There's a team of six of us in the office and it's just crazy <laughs> I love it I, I, and sure no matter how many times I hear this story I, I just love it it's almost it's really heartwarming and I think everyone can relate to it so as much as you know they say it's a bit different for what I do it's, it's this product based but I think everybody needs your products because how many of us especially you know, I think maybe you need an entrepreneur edition okay because you know, yeah I think we're really guilty of not giving our time where we want to give it I think we all yeah. sort of we're so into work yeah, we probably need it the most, I think, entrepreneurs, just to be able to switch off from the phones and spend quality time. So in a way, it becomes self-care, isn't it? You're, you know, it's very, yeah, it's very self-care. Yeah, and especially if the other half of the year, your other half is the other, is an entrepreneur with you, then yeah, there's literally no switch off because you're constantly talking about it or remembering a conversation you've not heard finished or and I guess even if it's you know if your other half comes home from work and you've had an idea, there's no one necessary to share it with if you're kind of in this business on your own for a long time it was just me and so John would get home from work and I'd just bombard him with the ideas I'd had just to get someone else's opinion and he'd had a busy day at work he was trying to decompress and then I was just throwing and because he works in IT so he built the website so I'd be going oh I need this on the website you need to do this and just chucking all this information because you spend so much time kind of on your own to a certain extent doing what you think is right you need that validation so yeah there could be a that might go on the to-do list for an entrepreneur box uh, I've just given you more work to do Kate fine (laughs) (laughs) the to-do list is already very long don't worry (laughs) yeah it is and yeah yeah I mean I'm just gonna like go back to that story because I just love how you know this was something I was gonna chat about because actually I was thinking as we're having this conversation I was thinking should I should we have John on as well because it is very much I mean yeah where did that who who gets the credit for it I guess I suppose John gets it in a way for the the gift but then you've made it happen so yeah it's it's a funny one isn't it that I guess does, does he tell the story differently in that sense um not too much differently he does like to to kind of draw out on the nine months later the baby was born part because he seems to think that will sell more jars but I'm not entirely sure it would work um but yeah it was definitely a combined effort I mean my background is marketing and design and his is IT so between us we had the skills we needed Mm. to be able to get it up and running so we moved away from the jar and created a box because it was just easier to post um and all of that kind of stuff but even to today he'll have an idea and say oh we should do it this we should do this and I just kind of go how would we even do that and he goes off and does it so he definitely needs a lot of the credit as well and it was his idea and on a good day it was his idea and it's a good thing on a bad day it's all his fault so I, I, <laughs> I like that yeah I'm liking that one I almost feel like we need a cardboard cut out of John we should maybe photoshop <laughs> <him or something. laughs> I've got plenty of boxes I've got plenty of cardboard boxes around me but not a not a John shaped one unfortunately no. <laughs> does he do podcast 
podcast has he ever been on a podcast yeah we've done a few we have done a few together um but it just tends to be I tend to take over really with this kind of thing I just he doesn't get a word in edgeways let's be honest so. I love it well do you know what that's one of the things I want to chat about actually as much as we're just having a random chat but I, I did want to chat about because there's something I'm quite passionate as you know about people being the face of their brand and if it's a personal brand it's a no-brainer you are your brand but when it comes to products I think that's really interesting actually that John probably does sit back in the background and you are more at the forefront but I'd like to chat about that because a lot of people even with a personal brand even if it's not a project they might have a business name and it can feel quite scary stepping like past it so actually I'd love to know how you approach that and get John's side of it as well just you know was that a big scary thing to put your name face and name to this as a product brand or was it just always quite were you quite comfortable it's it's always been a bit of a, a strange one for me I think when it was starting off a lot of kind of it was all friends and family who were looking at it so it kind of felt quite okay but I think a lot of people for a long time thought that it was just something I was doing as a bit of a hobby or something you know I'd be getting messages going, oh could you could you pick you know from from relatives and things saying oh could you could you pick my son up from school and I was thinking well no I'm I'm at work so I think for a long time it was a bit of a weird one because it just was friends and family who were seeing it so it didn't feel strange and then it kind of grew naturally so as the followers grew particularly on social media it just became a, a natural and it's still not something I do a huge amount of and I know I need to do more and the whole stories and talking to camera is on my to-do list as well um so I'm never fully com I'm never fully comfortable with it but I am trying to push myself and that's something I need to do more and put more pictures of us on and and talk about who we are a lot more and get John's side of it as well he's quite happy to let me be the face and the voice and just be doing his thing keeping things ticking over keeping the money going and the money side of things and the technology side of things going which I am um, yeah we'd not be here today if he wasn't running that side of things <laughs> oh I love that oh there, there we go more credit to John but it's almost yeah. like typical um IT isn't it you get that sense of somebody likes IT just to kind of just retreat and hide away and just let you sort of be the face of it uh, I'll have yeah. to nag you I'll have to nag you about that then Kate I'll have to make sure I'll have to um crack yes, whip, get, get you showing your face on 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 screen <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's uh it's not something I'm I just I don't know I just never feel quite comfortable but we do, and I know you always get a better response from doing it so I know it's something I need to do but it's one of those where I think I thought when I get to 5,000 followers I'll do it then and then I got to 5,000 and I was like oh well well when it's our third birthday I'll do it then and it yeah it just it never yeah. happened <laughs> no, <laughs> it's always it, an excuse <laughs> yeah and it's not easy actually and like you say I suppose in a way that's it's a good it, uh, it's really difficult because for when people do have products or like say um, a company name they hide behind I think it is almost like a safety blanket a little bit and it's that stepping forward beyond it because you've always got something to kind of to show but yeah it's do you think that's because are you quite I mean I, I would say I'm quite an introvert and actually I used to hate being on camera and I used to hate being the face of it whereas now I'm a bit like Woo. um but you know is that something that yeah is that just like a genuine thing that you're just not yeah, so keen on I think so yeah it's just I think you always sound different don't you when you hear yourself back or something you never sound like how you think you sound and I've never quite kind of got over that that side thing so I've never really done it a huge amount and in previous roles I was the kind of the account manager so the go-between and so I was always kind of behind the scenes so yeah I guess it, it is a it's easy to hide behind the date boxes and the the birthday boxes and show those rather than than showing than showing us but the personal posts that you kind of like you say we've got the keys to the new house even that kind of post always just works so much better than than uh, I know John took over the Instagram last night because it was International Women's Day um and I I'd said to him I just don't know what to post I need to post something but I just don't know what angle to do with it and he's just like just leave it with me so I was thinking no oh, no so I didn't even know he'd done it for quite a while we were obviously oh. busy with the house and I didn't know he'd done it so uh yeah he he does he will jump out when in the, and those kind of posts always go down really well so I need him to I need him to take over Instagram a bit more sometimes as yeah. well this is this is what we need to get yeah, we'll get yeah. him talking we'll get him doing lives and things and see <laughs> yeah I'll get him on the podcast I'll do it separately yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's down as mister a year of dates isn't he on Instagram yes yeah, yeah so maybe he is, that's yeah. what we need yeah that's interesting so maybe it's like I suppose do you know what this is what I love about this story as well because it's, you obviously you know you're not it's not just a business you are you're married it's quite the love story as well and this is what I love that even that because I was going to mention that post so for anybody who's wondering what we're on about there was there's a post for International Women's Day, Women's Day and 
John took over and it was just, it, again, it's so heart heartfelt. And at the minute, the way the world is, it was just so nice to read a really nice, genuine post. Because he, he does sing your praises, doesn't he? Yes, yeah. No, he, he does. And I think sometimes when you're in the thick of it, whatever kind of business you're running, you don't realise how much you do. I mean, sometimes you kind of come home and we go, what have you done today? I haven't, I don't feel like I've done anything. But then when we have a meeting or we go through things that we've done, we list all the things we've done and you think, well, actually, we are. it's hard to realise how much you're doing and how much you're moving things forward when you're so in the so in the thick of it. You sometimes need that bit of perspective to step back and go, actually, we have done it. We have done a lot. It doesn't look like we've done a lot, but we have. We've got through a lot of ticks, a lot of things off the list. And yeah, that bit of perspective definitely helps. And having that other person to give that perspective is a is good because it's hard to do it yourself and it's hard to go on Instagram and shout say oh you know um I founded this business I'm brilliant it's not something that you can really do so yeah to to have that other person who can say what you can't say without you know, you know it's just a strange yeah a strange one I show I don't mind putting pictures of my face on and saying I'm you know this is me I am this is who's who's posting but yeah just to it's just a strange one to go on and but then I can't tell him to do it because then that sounds even worse I'm like John please go on and write about how brilliant I am on Instagram <laughs> that would be great it's just he needs to just do it sometimes he just takes my phone and does it or yeah um is a, is a bit of a surprise so yeah it's a nice it's a, it's nice to to read it I suppose as well <laughs> it is and like so it's nice for the for the viewers the audience to read it as well because it just came off as so genuine and I think that's you know this is again something I bleat on about is about you know what is it with with women and singing our own praises it just feels really really I, even I'm like that you know as much as I tell the people to do it and a lot of the work I do with people is pushing them to share the magic or you know share their brilliance but then actually I'm really rubbish at doing it myself so yeah let's let's talk about that Kate because that's something I could talk about all day but why why do we do it why is it so oh it's just awkward isn't it I don't know I think it's I guess it's I don't know I think for me it's kind of like people judging us as well it's like I don't know it's that judgment thing isn't it and other people it's almost like the, the playground mums you don't want to kind of you don't want people to think that you're kind of showing off about something or I've got a better car than you I don't know it's the whole thing just is really uncomfortable isn't it it's uh and obviously like we've just moved to this new house um and it's only about a mile away from our old house but um it's in a slightly different area and when we tell people they're like oh you live there now do you and I was thinking I didn't even realize it was that was the thing but you know well, our accountant's due to come out he's like oh am I allowed to come there I'm not sure I'm allowed to visit this area and I was like what is it so are you gonna are you gonna join the golf club now and I was like no I'm I have no intention of joining a god I don't have time for that yeah. but it's like and, and now I feel like when people say where have you do I was like oh it's just down the road I don't want to say where it is because I don't want you know it's oh, it's no. just different people's conceptions of what you're doing isn't it and it just I don't know why we do it it's it's strange isn't it but we've got I mean so many things that I could post about on Instagram about how many sales we've had and and that kind of thing and you just again I, I don't mind doing it every so often but I don't want every week to be like, oh because John's like oh we've hit this many sales on Etsy or we've hit this many sales on not on the high street but I don't want to keep doing that every week because it just it, and again it's that showing off thing you feel like you're showing off if other people are having a, a slow time or aren't getting any orders it can make it can demoralize other people I suppose as well so yeah there's got to be a fine balance between shouting about what you what you've achieved and and keeping it real I guess as well because it's yeah. not all roses but that they're the bits you shout about aren't they so well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> we want the answers, Kate. This is it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's interesting, and it's it's funny actually that we we all do it, and even like I say, as much as I say to others, don't do it. We all do worry about what people think, and it's interesting there, even that you said about it demoralising. Whereas, I guess sometimes it could be quite inspiring as well. But there's yeah. something about that, isn't there? And it's getting like so the, the fine line between you know, if you ever see the big gurus out there, the big sort of more businessy coach gurus that do shout about their six seven eight figures that's what I don't like and that's I guess that's probably where that's taking you isn't it a little bit of just like that fear yeah of yeah and if, if I see other people doing it or even I mean as a as a product business we send out we, and I will do it but it's like people put on how many sacks of royal mail collection they've got that day and it's just kind of thing I sometimes see them I go like, oh well, we haven't got that many what are they doing but that could be you know a week's worth of orders or it could be I mean and obviously at Christmas and things we are getting that many but and it, and I do show it but then on other days I'm thinking well, I'm not going to show the two but then maybe I should show the two sacks that we're sending out today because it's quiet and we're not getting that many orders it's 
Mm. It's um, it's just about the balance, isn't it? It's yeah. yeah, but just getting it out there and doing it. That's what we need to do. Just forget the little voice in our head and just do it because yeah, it because maybe people yeah, like you say, and I always find that people are really supportive when I do do it, but then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Um, no, and I'm the same. And I'm, I'm putting, you on, putting you on the spot there, Kate, wanting the answers. Yeah. Like I know them. <laughs> I'm exactly the same. But yeah, it, it's like so it's that fine line between what's inspiring and what isn't. And I, I just wonder sometimes if by uh, by down downplaying our own success sometimes, because I say I'm guilty of this as well. That actually, yeah, there's probably people that would inspire by doing the opposite. But yeah there is something that stops it a little bit i mean well let's actually let's switch it this is a great example because i always ask the question of whether it's a female thing whether this is very much women that do it but actually we've got a direct comparison here i mean how does john deal with it how does he find that whole i know he's behind the he's behind the camera yeah, so yeah i think if he 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 always tells me kind of what stats we've got and he's built a dashboard that shows us all the stats um so i think he would probably have a lot less kind of preconceptions about just telling everybody what we've done um we're both in a facebook group um for one of the platforms that we're on and there's always it's i guess it's the same thing isn't it people are always a bit negative they're like oh it's really quiet is anyone else really dead and then all the comments are there when you're having a good time you're busy you're not posting on facebook you you're busy um and I, and I always want to say, well, actually, we're, do, we're doing all right. We're quite busy. But then I always think, oh, no, that sounds like I'm bragging. And I think John would just go on there and be like, well, we're really busy, actually, and not even think about it. So I think it is I think it is a female thing to a certain extent, um, yeah. definitely. He And he always he gives me these stats. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use that another i'll use that one day and he's like you didn't you never did it did you and i was like <laughs> <laughs> um and then he might, he's like we're nearly at the next number that we could shout about so i'll wait for that one instead and mm. yeah it's i think it is definitely a female thing i think we overthink things as well we start thinking well what if i do that and then this happens whereas mm. generally in life john just does it and then doesn't think about you know worries about the consequences afterwards i mean and i i even with the moving house i've been worrying about well what if this happens and then what we're going to have for tea and John's like well just order a takeaway why are you even thinking about tea and I'm like oh well I, I like to be prepared I like to think of all these things that could happen and and be prepared for them all and he's just like well we'll just do it and then we'll just order some food and I was like oh okay yeah yeah you're like that's simple <laughs> yeah, right okay I, I didn't think it but yeah it's it, it generally in life I will overthink a lot of things and I think that is a female thing I've, I'm 10 steps ahead of all the possible scenarios that could happen if this happens and he's like yeah but they might not and I was like oh yeah okay fair enough yeah so we do balance each other out in that way a lot he just he just even the whole house move again he was I it wasn't happening it was we were moving one day then we weren't and I was getting really stressed about it and worried and he was just like oh it'll happen and it's like well our entire life's in boxes you know what if we need something that's in the box and he said well we'll just go on Amazon and buy another one and I was just like oh no I don't <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely a I think it is quite a fee out of all the females I know it's definitely a female trait that they all have is what you know worrying about things 10 steps further down the path that could happen and yeah, yeah. what people might say and and things so yeah that's uh, again yeah I don't, I don't know how we get out of out of it but unless it's it's kind of the people who who do start just saying this is how it is and this is what we're doing and this is how well we're doing or this wasn't a good day and making it more of the norm I suppose but we just mm. have to push ourselves to do that we do I'm feeling something coming on maybe we should make a pact Kate and we'll just do that for each other it's maybe just push okay. each other to kind of yeah. because yeah there's something in that isn't it I just love that we've had that just be able to like literally ask about you know John's take on that because a lot of the the guests I speak to are female or sometimes I've had the old male guests where I'll ask that sort of question and they're again quite factual so it's so nice to kind of have that direct comparison and I think yeah we probably just without Joe you know without being a stereotypical women are emotional card but I think we do have we do probably bring that emotion to it which is not a bad thing but but, but men are more factual aren't they so he probably would just say yes this is it but I mean how yeah. do you find that works with the brand overall do you think that helps you kind of bring even more heart to the brand as well because it is quite that warm and fuzzy brand I'd say yeah I think so it definitely needs that kind of emotional it's quite an emotional brand it's quite and some of the stories we get um 
when the, the, the people um, said leave us reviews or the people that post about their dates on Instagram will tell us kind of what a difference it's made to them. Um, and it is, it is really nice to read. And some of us, again, John will come up with things like, our, I can't remember what we were working on. And he'll just say, well, why don't we put these cards in it as well? And, and it's something I hadn't thought of. And he is, he can be very thoughtful in that way as well and come up with the kind of, the things it's not just the the, te the technology and making it work he can be like well and it's things that I might not have thought of and I can't remember what it was now but he's like well why don't we just put this in it as well and it's like oh yeah I didn't <laughs> <laughs> can't see the wood for the trees for, for trying to to get there but yeah it's he he does have that kind of side as well and he will say well people might like that but then I'll I'll kind of counteract it and be like well yeah but not everybody will so then then essentially I don't do it because it's my idea but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it you know I love that I mean as, as you know we're talking about your story becoming your brand actually what I love really if we like take this a bit deeper it's not just your story it becomes like everybody else's stories because in a way I say there's content in everything but your date cards kind of give content themselves don't they I mean what sort of what what are the most let's, let's talk about I love stories anyway but let's talk about the stories because I think people forget to share their their case studies of the people they work with it always feels like it's about us and our brand but actually yeah there's there's always content in the the work you do so yeah tell me about some stories that you've had that you share yeah we've been so lucky because like you say the people take the date cards with them they get the card and they take it on the date and they'll take a photograph of themselves or the card in the situation on the date sometimes they take the envelope with them as well or it's a picture of themselves and every year because most people it's a very popular christmas and valentine gift so yeah around January we always get an influx of new people who've got the date box for Christmas and they start posting it's like hashtag week one and then by about week six they're starting to slip a bit and by about week 12 they've, oh no. they've they're, they're still doing it but I think the the commitment and as much as we say it's one a week we don't you don't have to do it there's no rules so a lot of people we speak to then say well it's still here and when we need it or when we say oh what should we do tonight it's the date box is there but then we always get the people who like religiously open their envelopes and we kind of get to know them over the year and we'll be we'll be messaging them on Instagram and chatting with them there was one lady who literally messaged me and said we're having a week off because it's Christmas we're really busy and I was like it's fine you don't have to email me and tell me that you're having a week off it's fine just I think they were on like week 40 something so they'd done really well wow. she said we're just having a week off because we're so busy at Christmas and I said you don't have to explain yourself to me it's <laughs> not it. work for you um but we have we've got a few case studies that we've we've managed to interview the people and put them on our website there was one couple who actually got together during lockdown the second lockdown I think it was and they bought the box for each other quite early on in their relationship and it really helped them because they they kind of got together in this weird time where they couldn't really go anywhere or do anything um and they they went all out they actually they've got um they've got a dog called poppy a, a golden retriever and they would dress the first time i came across them they dressed her up as a croupier and they were having a casino night at home and this dog had like a bow tie on and was had its paws up on the table with cards in front of it and so they would they would use the dog in or in the dates as well with with some of them um and they actually and they had a lovely story about how it it made them try new things and get to know each other as well because it was so early on in their in their relationship and they were in this weird time where they couldn't go anywhere so it just got them to to try new things and to really kind of see what each other liked and didn't like and, and get to know each other I guess um and then one of my other favorites is the lady who she actually bought it for her other half for valentine's day but they split up just either just before or just after valentine's day and we get that a few times and people will then say oh can i send it back to you mm. and if it's not personalized then yeah absolutely send it back and to be fair even if it is personalized we'll often say yeah send it back we can we can reuse the cards and things inside it rather than have this reminder sat there in front oh. of them all the time but this lady actually went on all the dates by herself um she used it as almost like a self-care thing or a kind of recovery thing I suppose and she would go out for dinner or she'd meet up with friends um and they'd go and do the dates themselves she actually booked herself I think it might have been the one of the cards is a comedy night and she booked tickets to see Sarah Millican on her she went on her own she said I've never done this before I'm really nervous but it's really pushed me to do something new and she just bought one ticket and went to this went to see this comedian on her own and that was her take on the the comedy night um card 
and it's not something she would have done without it and she took herself out for brunch and went on a spa day with friends and you know she and she she had children as well so sometimes they'd get involved with it as well and it was just a really it became a really lovely thing for her to do despite having bought it for this relationship yeah which was no more she's made it into a really positive experience for herself so yeah it's just we are very lucky that we get to to hear from all these people Um, and as we're expanding into America we're seeing quite a lot of people using the cards over there and their take on it as well so one of the cards is going for afternoon tea and this couple found an English pub and had fish and chips and that was their take on an afternoon tea it made us realize that actually we probably need to change the product a bit because I think the card one of the cards go for a car boot go to a car boot sale um it's the car boot sale challenge so challenge yourself to buy something at a car boot sale and they were like we didn't know what a car boot sale was so we had to google it and then I think they went to target and went to the sale aisle in target and used that as their (laughs) as their car boot sale but yeah I guess it's a garage sale over there or yeah you know so it's just the way the, the way the cards are worded it's quite an interesting way to find out kind of how they're interpreted in different places as well and everyone interprets them differently everyone comes up with their own way of doing the dates so it's yeah it's there's so much content out there um I need to share more (laughs) (laughs) that's good to say yeah there's loads to share I'm not sure I've seen all these stories I'll have to again I'll have to be cracking the whip a little bit (laughs) yeah they're um well they're definitely we like I say we've we've interviewed a few of the daters two are just mentioned there they're on the blog um as a full story and then yeah when people share a nice picture someone shared a picture just before pancake day of breakfast in bed and it was pancakes <laughs> so I was like so I, I generally send them a message and say do you mind if I share this um yeah. and they always say yes yeah. so I say because they did it as a story I said can you send me the photo without all the text written over it and then I can and I'll use those so yeah it's just for me it's getting a mix between the products the products in use and kind of not being too salesy as well as just the sale you know if I'm saying oh look buy this box it's great no one no one does because <laughs> it's too it's too salesy so yeah the the the, the user content is brilliant yeah um, well do you know what? that's something I'd like to talk about actually because I'm always saying to people and people people do this whether it's a service or a product it's just more comfortable back to that thing of maybe not showing up for not wanting to big ourselves up too much you know I'm constantly saying to people speak to the transformation own your brilliance share it but we feel much more comfortable just share just telling people what it is and I guess that's the same for you that you know if it was just say somebody might be a coach and say I offer these coaching sessions for you it's this is our product but actually it goes beyond that doesn't it that's not necessarily what sells I mean it is an amazing product but actually it's the emotions the emotions the experiences that go with it I know you're hot on that aren't you that's something what your strap your strap plan again is about making memories isn't it yeah well we've got a couple but yeah it's um we've got collect memories not things um that we that we use a lot um and then our main one is living in the present so again it's just about kind of about to the play on the word present as well um and being just being in the moment i guess but yeah we're very we're kind of we are very big on that and it's really difficult to get across um in a lot of situations especially all our sales are done online and it's it is a difficult thing to get across in that kind of short attention span that you've got of someone's time to get that whole message across um so yeah I think for us it's going to be a lot of video content this year that's kind of our that's where I want to to go is getting video content of the the kind of the emotional side of it and and that kind of thing that's my challenge for this year I don't think it'll be me recording it I don't think that'll work (laughs) (laughs) or me in it but yeah it's a it's just kind of trying to get the message across, like you say, without just saying, oh, it's a box with cards in it. It's yeah, it's getting that message across and it's a constant, it's a constant, not struggle, but constant Challenge. reminder to people that, yeah, you have to. And then you've got different boxes for different occasions as well. So the other kind of angle we go at is it's the gift for something, for someone who has everything. So when you're thinking, oh, it's my dad's birthday, he doesn't need anything. He said he doesn't want anything. I bought him chocolate last year. I bought him a pair of socks the year before that what can I what can I do kind of thing it's that well it's like it's it gives them the opportunity to make memories either with you or with other people or on their own it's just that kind of gift for someone that has everything already it's not um it's not really a material thing it's it's a way of getting experiences and time but it's just a tricky message to get across in that little Mm -hmm. snapshot of time you have (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, because that's what exactly what I feel about your your products, your brands. I feel like it's almost the boxes have to exist and they they lead to all this, but it's so much more. It's so much bigger, and that's what I say to a lot of people. It's not just that service you offer. It's not just that product. It's actually pretty huge, really. What you do in that yeah. sense is, you know, you are giving people like some memories that otherwise we just wouldn't necessarily take. Because yeah. it's, it's gift, it's, God, it's kind of like the gift of time, but that's watchers. <laughs> I'm trying to brainstorm now as I'm think as I'm trying to think about what 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 it actually gives. But I think I think it is memories, isn't it? I think it's just yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's just that it's that reminder that you need to make the effort to make that time and and make the time for the fun things rather than just being. If I think back to how we were when we first got this date jar, it's that kind of like we were coming home from work probably plugging the laptop back in because we've been in the car for an hour just checking in yeah picking our phones up messaging people and cooking tea putting the tv on and then probably working a bit more and going to bed getting up at six and doing the same thing it's just you know a reminder and the but the bot the physical box be is the reminder that there's more to do there's, there's you know to make this effort and I know for us it was always a case of well we should do something but what what should we do I don't know oh yeah. and then by about nine o'clock we go oh we could have gone to the cinema oh it's too late now <laughs> no never mind oh we won't put a movie on it's a bit late so it's that kind of it takes the decision making away as well which can oh, I was like oh no you choose no I don't want to choose you decide what we should do and then no one does anything so uh <laughs> yeah let the envelopes decide <laughs> well, yeah I love that I love I love it. it's like the the yeah your your path is all in the box that can like lead your journey with it but yeah it's I'm totally forgetting what I was gonna say there Kate because I was listening <laughs> intently about you know that making time for each other and, and you know I'm so guilty of that I think we're all guilty back to I'm just gonna bring it back to entrepreneurs but actually I think everybody's guilty aren't they we've all had long days whether it's parenting whether it is just life <laughs> and it's so it's so easy to just to get into that trap of actually not making the time for each other and you know not contacting friends there's just a lot isn't there that a lot of the old boxers do but yeah. what I was going to ask that's coming back to me now is you know what is your advice for that because how how do you find it with with you and John now obviously they started pre-kids you've got your daughter now have you struggled to kind of keep it going I'd love like almost tips because this becomes tips for everybody listening that how to make that time for yourself and for others how does it work for you? Yeah, we, we have definitely struggled. Um, the date jar that had the, the original one with 72 envelopes in there, I think they are now all open, but it was literally oh, kind of in the last 12 months that we actually, and we haven't done them all, we've opened them all. Um, uh. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's about kind of being realistic, I think, with your time. So a lot of the dates you can do at home. It's not kind of going, right, we need to go out tonight. We've got, you know, we must go out on a date. It's you can have a date at home so easily it could be cooking together it could be making a playlist it could be doing a jigsaw or getting a board game out it doesn't have to be something that takes hours of your time it's it's just the it's just the effort it could be making a cup of coffee and opening a bar of chocolate and just sitting together Ooh, and, yeah. and talking about your day it's just that kind of or what you're going to do at the weekend or making plans for something fun to do it's it's just kind of acknowledging really that you need to make that make that time and I think for the last couple of years because we've been for a long time like I said it was just me in the business then John quit his job and he came um on board as well so for a lot of the time it was just the two of us and we would just talk about work or we would work in the evening but equally we could then not work the next we could drop Phoebe off at nursery and go and get breakfast together and we'd spend or go to we can go to Ikea on a Thursday morning it doesn't you know it's not exactly romantic dates but we can do things like that where we take the time out of our day and, and make that time for each other. Like I say, we, we go out, we try and go out for breakfast once a week or um, we try and work from home one day a week, but we, we know that we're kind of aiming towards this bigger goal where we have more time and we're now in a position where we, we can go on holiday and leave the business running. So we can actually go on holiday and know that orders are still going out and okay. it's still ha all happening without us. So the work over the last few years we've known it's been hard and we know we've not been doing what we practicing what we preach but it was for a kind of a, a bigger goal um yeah. which is this kind of point where we can go out and I mean we're, we're very lucky that we can pick Phoebe up from school 
we actually do it two days a week now because grandparents help and she goes to after school club um but we can go and pick her up we can be in the playground we both take her to school every morning and just having that kind of bit of time together um every day we are also learning to dance as well which I is giving this. us a little bit a little bit of more time regularly together where we're not talking about work or the house and not um we're just falling out with each other over our dance moves instead now <laughs> what a way to do it better than squabbling at home you might as well squabble in dance yeah. class <laughs> and it's, it's something that we're, we're doing it as a as a charity thing but actually we've already said um even if it's just once a month but it's something that we'll keep doing um and it'd be nice to do it without the pressure of knowing we've got to do a performance at some point in not very long um <laughs> but it's something that if I said to John let's go to a dance lesson we'd never have gone but now we're doing it if we can get a babysitter once a month, we'll go back and, and do the class and, and just enjoy it for a little while. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just doing things you wouldn't normally do, I guess, as well, and making that effort. And that is something we definitely wouldn't have done just for, oh, let's go to a dance class. Just yeah. Rock up and see what happens. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just pushing yourself. Again, it's that pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, I suppose, and just trying new things and going with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't really practice what we preach. We we work in the <laughs> evenings, but we finish at three. The office shuts at three, so we'll come home and once Phoebe's in bed, we'll start work again. Sometimes, other times, John will want John will want to work and I won't, so he'll go off and work and I'll relax on my own. So we we do have that flexibility. But yeah, we we are getting a little. We're trying to get a little bit better at practicing what we preach. <laughs> yeah, but Joe, you know when when do we ever? No, I don't think anybody practices what they preach in this world. And again, but you're back to that's almost come full circle because back to that thing of being very real. You know that that is the reality, isn't it? And and I get a bit fed up of seeing all these again big gurus out there that preach from a higher level as such about you know that that it's all rosy that they just get to work like one hour a day and that's it it's not real is it so I, I like that you're really honest about that that yeah at least you've got the flexibility there's a lot of positives but actually it is, it is a roller coaster isn't it it's entrepreneurial yeah, yeah life <laughs> yeah and I think we generally we wake up in the morning and John will go on the kind of like online banking thing to make sure everything balances and I'll go on Instagram and sort out my posts for the day and yeah we're working at kind of seven o'clock and then we put the phones down and do breakfast in the school run and ironing uniform and everything but where our, our kind of first and that kind of is kind of our roles in the business John goes on and checks that everything balances and then I and I go on and see how many likes we've had so yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you're fine as well like, I I enjoy it and I think there's a lot of guilt that comes with this sometimes and it's better in a way that you both you're both in business together because you'll get each other that you both do that, that you know that is that first of all Whereas somebody else, you know, people listening who maybe have family, friends, even partners that don't get it at all, yeah. that's hard, isn't it? That, you know, sometimes you shouldn't always feel, feel guilty because like, I love going on social media. There's there's a plus side, and there's a downside and a plus side to it. Actually, I love yeah. that side of my business, but it can be, yeah. Do you, do you ever like, it takes that? Over, yeah, it, takes yeah. Over, it just takes over, doesn't it? Because you're always thinking, oh, there might be a message or, and people yeah. messages about their orders. I actually found one the other night and it had gone into kind of that, that hidden request folder on Instagram that I, never oh, yeah. see um and it was somebody asking because their discount code didn't work and they'd message they'd left the message on Sunday and I didn't see it till Tuesday oh. by which point you're thinking well that's you know if you're not replying to messages that quickly then you're kind of you're losing people and they think you're not interested so mm. it's about kind of for me it's about keeping it making sure people know it's actually us that are doing it it's not kind of it's not a robot or something as well I think so I yeah but I do need to either go on and do something constructive and not just get lost in the the scrolling because that's my downfall me too oh definitely me <laughs> too <down> rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you, i think i put that in my stories yesterday about a rabbit hole it was it's yeah it's crazy isn't it you can just end up doing that but let's really quickly talk about something else that i wanted because i think yours your business has been like a natural progression with this but there will have been some fear at some point in this because that again something i'm passionate about is growing a team because it sounds like you know that's where your flexibility comes from that's where you get to be able to go on holiday now and leave it to other people but not everybody's at that stage and there might be people listening thinking well i'm nowhere near that stage especially have got like a product business and i think it's all them i mean how, how did that happen how did that transition work for you was there a lot of fear or did it just feel like the right thing it, there was a lot of fear there was a lot of me not wanting to let go there was a lot of I do it this way this is how I do it this is the way you do it 
and then people going well why don't you do it this way and I was going because that's not the way I do it this is my yeah you do it my way basically um yeah um even to the point of like even at the beginning when we got we it kind of the first valentine's day we had went crazy and um, we just joined out on the high street and it was literally me stuffing these 52 envelopes per set by myself wow um and we were sticking them with a sponge and we'd have um my in-laws and john's sister everyone coming around and stuffing the envelopes but none of them would seal them because the way i did it they would they basically did it wrong so i had to seal every single one because nobody else would dare go near them <laughs> um so there was a lot of fear around letting go and letting other people do things. I'm now not allowed to send orders out because I do it wrong, apparently. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm banned from the dispatch table at the moment. I'm on a... <laughs> I, did one order the other day. I did one order and managed to print the wrong label for it. So I'm just, I'm just not allowed near it anymore. I'm banned. Oh, no, so the tables um, have turned, literally. <laughs> But we were very lucky. The first member of staff we took on, um, it was during lockdown um, and she she was already self-employed. She worked in the theatre. So she didn't, and we knew she'd be going back to the theatre when they reopened. So there was less, it was a bit of a trial for everybody really. There was, mm. there was less pressure there because we weren't saying, right, this is your permanent job. Um, yeah. We could see how busy it was. She actually came in initially to help with childcare while we were in the office, just the two of us. And a four-year-old who was wanting to play and basically been sat from front of Netflix for, for weeks on end. <laughs> so they, she came in that when we were on a Zoom call or if we had a meeting, we we had we, we had less guilt basically that there was someone else there who could play with her, was painting, was getting her a snack and taking her to the toilet. Um, and then as she kind of went back into nursery, um, Sarah stayed and started watching me pack orders and and taking over. So it was a really good step for us because it proved that we did need someone yes. um, and it gave us, it, she kind of gradually built up her knowledge and it, it just, it would just work because we didn't, we didn't have the pressure. She was self-employed. So we didn't have all the kind of paperwork that goes with it. Um, and then we realized that eventually she was going to leave and we did need someone to, to do that role. So that's when we took on our first full-time employee and it, it we'd, we'd kind of tested the water um yeah we tested the water a little bit we'd and we felt more comfortable with it we knew there was jobs that needed doing we knew what someone would do all day um and what what was, and, and we've been really lucky with the person that we took on Chelsea she's been with us for 18 months now and she basically she just she's the she is our officially our office manager um and she knows she knows it all she's she kind of she tells us what to do she makes suggestions she comes up with products it's brilliant she's just kind of lives it and breathes it as much as as we do which is what we wanted so it just made that kind of transition easier but I think you have to let go and there's certain things I won't let go of at the moment like social media um and eventually maybe I will have to but at the minute that's that's my baby um yeah John with printing as well because we bought this printer and John had built the system that it works on John is was pretty much the only person who could do it which meant that he couldn't leave the office and um, he was tied to the computer so oh, no. almost 12 months ago we took someone on um through the kickstart campaign to, to do that and again she's been she's worked out brilliantly um but then we've realized now because she hasn't actually had a day off for ages so we were now encouraging her to take time off but we now need someone else who can work the oh. printer as well because in the middle of a house move she actually she had a doctor's appointment on monday morning so she wasn't in the office it was monday we were in the literally in the middle of moving house and john had to go into and print boxes for two oh, hours no. because there was no one else to do it it was monday and there was express orders that needed to go out so yeah. yeah we're starting we we now realize that we need a bit more uh flexibility around the, the printer um but he found that very difficult to let go of as well because that was something he'd done for two years and, it, and he knew how he did it and but yeah you you kind of have to yeah if you want to grow you have to do it um if you're in the position that you can afford it you yeah it's it's worth it <laughs> yeah it's always like i outsource a few things now and it's it's tricky because I can feel the same sort of thing that that fear, those two fears for me, I think it is financial because sometimes you've got to kind of, and you'll find this, I suppose, so many steps of your business where you've got to invest for it to, to get that return, haven't you? There's certain things like 
I don't even ask what those printers probably are worth, but I bet you've had to in, in, invest at some point knowing, and it's almost becomes a little bit spiritual, a little bit like trusting the universe because it's like knowing that it's going to work out, isn't it? So there's that Definitely. side of it as well as the control. So how did you deal with that fear around the financial? Because I think that is a big one for people. Yeah, and it's it's something that we're actually talking about at the moment because until recently you kind of we place an order for boxes and that's fine the boxes sell but the orders we're placing are getting bigger because we're now trying to send more boxes to America um we've literally just placed an order for 40,000 boxes Whoa. and that is it's still scary there's no kind of there's no kind of going back from it that is that is scary um and the decisions we're making now and it's often just me and John going yeah let's let's do that yeah that sounds like a good idea let's get another printer why not and <laughs> There's a, and now, but now there's more repercussions. If that, if it's not the right decision, then it's a lot of money. Or if something goes wrong, we're just taking on a. We're, we're looking to move to a new unit in the same mill that we're in, but downstairs. Ah. And the, the difference in rent is just scary. And it's that kind of whole decision of, well, is this the right thing to do? Should we? I don't know how much rent should we be spending. Um, yeah. Is this, you know, um. So we've actually given our accountant kind of a bit more of a, almost a financial director type role so he can challenge us and say yeah well that why wouldn't you do that you know it's mm. um and we need that person because uh, like I say a lot of the time it's just me and John going yeah another printer yeah that's yeah yeah why not um or a business let's buy another business we, and we don't talk to anyone about it we just do it but as you get bigger those decisions have a much bigger impact and a bit much bigger risk factor I suppose so yeah that fear doesn't go away but you have to you have to know I mean that's what the accountant's helping us is with the forecasting so it's like well if you have 40,000 boxes this is how long you've got to sell them and this is kind of how much they'll sell for and that's when you can pay you and then you can pay the rent because you've sold 40,000 boxes if you don't have 40,000 boxes you can't sell them so oh, it's that kind of balance but no it that that kind of fear doesn't go away you just have to kind of know your numbers I suppose and be confident that you yeah. you know that the numbers the numbers stack up we wouldn't do it if we we didn't think it would work but yeah it's that fear doesn't go away I don't think no. and that's probably not what people want to hear but again it's back to that real life because I can feel that that every time yeah you get to a certain point a little bit like you said with social media and, and sharing your voice that every time you get to that stage you think it's probably going to get a bit easier but like you said the, the consequences are bigger but I think yeah I think quite fancy like a financial director sort of person because I'm a bit rubbish at knowing my numbers I must admit I'm yeah, not the best it's, I, I don't really know them um but it's something that John's very big on and again it's like well if we do if we do obviously 40,000 boxes costs a lot of money so it's yeah. like well what do we have have we got the money where do we get the money from and then he can help us with that kind of thing and like say the forecasting and planning ahead and again up until now it's been like oh we, we it was around about that much I'm not sure <laughs> kind of thing and yeah it's just always been me and John so there's now there's other people kind of their salaries and therefore their mortgages relying on it it's it For kind sure. of has a bit of a <laughs> effect but yeah, there's a, there is a lot of gut instinct in there as well, but backed up with knowing your numbers and keeping the keeping on top of the finances, I suppose, as well, and being able yeah. to forecast. So it, yeah, it's it's good, but it's and again, it's something that I would never do. I'm not again. I don't run the accounts. I got in trouble years ago <laughs> for not doing it right. So. <laughs> my spreadsheet wasn't good enough so yeah John's taken over all of that side of things it's not my forte at all I love it. it's like the perfect balance in a way you do really complement each other and that's it and I just love what you said back to balance I love the way you said that then because I am very much about intuition and making these intuitive decisions but I love what you said and that's probably what I'm going to wrap it up with and I'll see if there's anything else you want to add to it Kate but I guess that just that tip of it being quite intuitive knowing your own gut but getting somebody to kind of to bounce that you're getting that support as well isn't it I mean what what sort of tips let's round it off now actually because we can ch we could chat, probably chat for a lot longer <laughs> uh, maybe we'll book we'll book it in again Kate we'll talk about something else but you've got like three of the therapy, it's going to become a therapy session I think <laughs> it could be something like therapy with Carly and Kate this could be something business therapy there we go see I'm getting all these ideas now but you have got like three other businesses so maybe we chat about another business one time oh, yeah <laughs> forgot about them <laughs> yeah forget about them but you know what is uh, to round it off you know what are your tips top tips I've kind of gone from storytelling just to like just entrepreneurship but what are your top tips for people listening that are just whichever stage they're at just I suppose just being an entrepreneur what is your top tip 
I think you kind of just say yes has been always been my advice just even if you know the first time someone said will you come on my podcast I was thinking oh I can't do that but it's just say yes um to opportunities um and figure out how you'll do it along the way I mean obviously if it's going to cost you money then that's <laughs> not something to do but <laughs> as a caveat um yeah. but say yes to the opportunities that come along and and put yourself out there and 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 go with it if, it if it feels right then then go with it um but I think the other one for us is was start small I mean we were very lucky with our business again being a product product based we could buy 100 boxes and that's what we did we didn't go out and like remortgage the house and buy 5,000 boxes and see what <laughs> happened we bought 100 and sold those and then ordered 200 um so don't kind of even if you think it's the best idea in the world don't risk everything on on the idea just kind of take it slow and and uh, and let it grow from there I think love that's it. my take on things <laughs> yeah no they're brilliant tips I love that and I love the say yes because I think that is very much yeah even actually this does bring it back to your original story because you could have shut shut down that idea right at the beginning and look where look where saying yes to even to that flicker of an yeah. idea has got you so yeah I think that's a brilliant tip to end it on Kate so yeah thank you so much without even realizing <laughs> no and i love when things work like that my, my brain's always thinking that it's like how could we bring this back round? and actually that just presented itself so we got there kate we brought it full we circle did. we kept fairly on track but like I say we might have to have this chat again <laughs> yes <laughs> well, let's make it a weekly weekly event <laughs> it could be it could be like say yeah sessions of carly and kate watch this space <laughs> that that will get back to that thing of getting you on camera actually kate then maybe that's it yeah yeah maybe <laughs> Right. Well, thank you so much. It's been brilliant. And say so all your thank tips you there. Yeah, no, my absolute pleasure. And we'll chat soon. But yeah, thank you so much. No problem. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs>